we are opened up to the next clean page in our math notebooks for today's notes. So today we are writing or titling our page 6.8, Continue Dividing with Decimals, and today's date of 11-20-2020. on here to make it brighter. I still, yeah, it's funny how that happens. 6.8, continue dividing with decimals, 11, 20, 20. Or 11, 20, 20, 20. Either one. All right. Are we, oh, I see some people finishing up. I'll give you another moment. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys. I appreciate you showing me that you're ready. Thank you. And a reminder that your mask, unless you're eating your snack, your mask should be covering your nose and your chin. Yes, Lila, go grab your snack. Okay, are we ready to move on? Okay, so practice. So our, our instructions for practice are find each quotient, annex zeros if needed. Now you might be wondering, Miss E, why did you use the word annex when you put in, in parentheses up above it, at? Why didn't you just say at? Because your homework will have the word annex in it. And all that that means is you know how we've added zeros as we've gone if we've needed to to our decimal numbers? You know how we've been doing that? That's exactly what they mean, okay? So when you see the word annex for directions, it's the same as adding, okay? And not like one plus one equals two, that adding, but adding on a zero to the number, okay? So find each quotient, so find each answer to the decimal problem, annex or add zeros if needed. Give me a thumbs up on your desk when you have this written down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mackenzie, loop those around your ears, okay? Thank you. So find each quotient, annex, or add zeros if needed. I see a few people, thank you. A few people finishing up this part of their notes. Thank you. So this is exactly what we've been doing, okay? We'll be dividing decimals. Um, as we go, if we get to the end of our number and we haven't reached zero yet when we're subtracting, um, we add a zero on and we drop it down. Okay, are we ready to move on? Okay, so we have four problems. Now, a quick reminder, make sure you're leaving space above the problems for your answer and you're leaving enough space below it to solve the problem. Okay, so we have four of them. This is our entire Yes, it sure is. So, yep, so this is it. So you can use the rest of your paper. So the first two are set up for you, three and four are not. So that's again in the practice of setting it up on your own. So number one, six, or six and 51 hundredths divided by six and two tenths. Number two, 35 divided by five tenths. Number three, nine and three tenths divided by 31 hundredths. And number four, 90 divided by 45 hundredths. 
Once you have these written down, you can go ahead and start solving them. I will know you are done when I see you have like your thumbs up and you're waiting patiently or you are quietly reading, writing, or drawing.
Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yes, I will. I will let him know. You're welcome. Bye. Drew is just a reminder that you're getting picked up at noon. Okay.
ready to rock. Ready to roll. All right, so fifth grade. I know that some of you are still working, and I know that these were a little trickier than the ones that we did last time. So um, I want you to make sure you are following along with me. We have all the skills we need to learn this, but sometimes when we put them all together, it can get a little confusing. So voice is off. Let's look at these together. Philip, put your book away. Max, take a seat, please. All right. So I'm going to get out my, let's use purple. Okay. So our first step, because we are dividing by a decimal number on the outside here, we need to move the decimal point. So I need to move it once. Maybe I'll use, actually, I'm going to use a pencil. All right. I'm going to use my pencil. Okay. So for my pencil, with my pencil, I'm going to move my decimal point once. So then how many times do I move this decimal point? Once. Once. I saw some people wanting to move it to the outs all the way. We move it the same amount of times that we move this one. Now, yesterday when we were practicing all of the problems we had, they ended up making the dividend, the number inside, also a whole number. But remember, I told you that won't always happen. So you just move it the same amount of times that you move it for the divisor. So now we have 65 and 1 tenth divided by 62. So can 62 go into 6? No. no. Can it go into 65? Yeah. Show me on your hand how many times. It goes in once. So I'm going to put a 1 above my 5. And then I'm going to subtract 62. So 65 minus 62 is 3. Then I bring down my 1. How many of you got tripped up when you got to this part? Anybody? Yes. Because how many times does 62 go into 31 fifth grade? Zero. Zero times. You may have thought, well, it can't go in. Actually, we need to rephrase that. It goes in zero times. So we would have to put a zero up top. Then we would be able to add a zero onto our number and bring it down. Now suddenly we have 310. Can 62 go into 310? Yes. Show me in your hand how many times does 62 go into 310? It goes in five times. And 62 times five is 310. Thank you. It's one of my favorites. It has Iron Man on it. Then I bring up the decimal where I moved it. I don't go to where the decimal originally was. I look at where I moved the decimal. It goes straight up between the one and the zero. One and five hundredths. In fifth grade, if you accidentally put it between the zero and the five, what I want you to start asking is, does it make sense for 62 to go into 65 and one tenths? 10 times, or does it make sense for 6 and 2 tenths to go into 6 and 51 hundredths 10 times? Then you probably answer no, because 6 times 10 is 60. So kind of thinking, does my answer make sense? Okay, let's try to keep our water bottle still, okay? Then we have number 2. So number 2, we do the same thing. Move my decimal first to make it a whole number in my divisor. Then we have to do the same thing for the dividend. Now this is a whole number 35. Our decimal is imaginary. It's right here. So if it's here, I still have to move it once to here, and that means I have to fill this space with a zero. Yeah. So can five go into three? Can five go into 35? Show me on your hands how many times? Seven times. So I'll put a seven above my five. Minus 35. 35 minus 35 is zero. Bring down the other zero. How many times does 5 go into 0? Zero? 0. 0 times. 5 times 0 is 0. Subtract to 0. I get 0. And now, this decimal is here. So it's at the end of our number. So you could have, 5th grade, you could have left it as 70. Or if you brought the 0 up, you just want to make sure you add a 0 onto it. So it's the whole number 70. All right, and then we had number three. So with these ones, I had some people getting tripped up when they were setting up their problems. Remember, the first number is your dividend. It goes inside the box you're creating when you set up the num was set up the problem. So my nine point three would go inside the box, 
I call this a box, it's like half a box. And then the 31 hundredths would go on the outside. Okay, now we're, we're almost ready. Now I need to move my decimal. I'm moving it twice, once, twice. So then I need to move this decimal once, twice. Since I have a space, I need a zero. So now we have 31 going into 930. Well, can 31 go into 9? No. Can 31 go into 93? How many times? Show me on your hand. How many times does 31 go into 93? Three times. So I'm putting a 3 above the 3. 31 times 3 is 93. So I'm subtracting 93 from 93. I get a 0. I bring down the other 0, and we still have to ask, how many times does 31 go into 0? 0 times. So I'm putting my 0. 31 times 0 is 0, so I will subtract, wind up with 0. Now again, the decimal would go right here at the end of our number. So you could leave it like this as a whole number 30, or if you brought up the zero or the decimal, you just need to make sure you add a 0 onto the end for 30. Then finally, we have number 4. So number 4 is same thing. The first number, this is the number that's being divided up, so it goes inside when we're setting up our problem. And the 45 hundredths goes outside. All right, we are set up. First step, moving the decimal once, twice. So my decimal for 90 is here. So I need to move it once, twice, and I need to extend my line. So I have two gaps here, so now I need to add two zeros. Can 45 go into 9? Can 45 go into 90? Yes. Show me on your hands how many times. It goes in twice. 45 times 2 is 90. Subtract 90. I get 0. Bring down the first 0. 45 goes into 0. 0 times. Subtract 0. I get 0. Bring down the final 0. 45 goes into 0. 0 times. You should still be at your seat. 45 times 0 is 0. I wind up with 0. Again, the decimal would go straight up, so you could leave it at 200, or bring up the decimal and add that final 0. So real quick, real quick, we're going to circle the numbers for our homework so that you have it written down. Open up to page 347. It is recess time, so let's cut the chit-chat and open up to 347. So, for, no, for page 347, we are circling number 2, number 5, number 8, number 11, and number 13. Again, we're on page 347. We are circling number 2, number 5. Number 8, number 11, number 13. Um, go back to your desks, please. I have not dismissed you. Number 2, number 5, number 8, number 11, number 13. All right, you may go get ready for recess and line up at the door.